here with uh, Abel Ramos, one of the world's best body punchers, one of the most exciting fighters in the welterweight division. Uh, thanks for joining me today, Abel. How's it going, Chip? And how, how's camp going? Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me, man. And um, yeah, man, camp's been going great. Um, we'll be ready for February 5th. Good. Uh, you've taken on Jose Cito Lopez, uh, another veteran um, who coming off a good win. He also fought Keith Thurman really, really competitively. Um, what are your thoughts on this fight? And, you know, I know you don't look past any opponent, but assuming you do win, you know, what do you want after this fight? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited about this fight. You know, I think uh, a lot of fans have, have been waiting for this this fight. Every time I, I would fight, you know, they, they would always comment, you know, that they wanted to see me against Jose Cito. I think because of our styles, it's going to be a great fight. And, yeah, man, of course, I'm not looking past him, but, you know, I, I want to make a statement this fight, and, and I want the best welterweights. I want the best, the top. Uh, and I want to ask you about that, right? Because this Jose Cesar Lopez fight has, like, fight of the year written all over it, right? Like, this is going to be like an old-school war. Um, are you going to give the fans a war, or do you have something else? Do you have some other more strategic plan in mind, or are we just going to have, you know, 12 rounds of war? Yeah, man. Um, I think um, you know, I my brother, my brother has a plan. You know, we're gonna stick to it. But you know, uh, you know my style. You know, I always, I always like to mix it up in there. So the fans are gonna get what they're, what they're, you know, they're gonna get, they're gonna get some excitement. We look at the main event. The main event, which is a Barrios, Thurman and Barrios, it's gonna be a good fight. But you look at the, the co-main event. You and Jose Club is like, uh, that's the fight to watch right there. That that's the one you don't want to miss. Um. You know, your style and Josito's style in the ring together uh, is, is you can't miss. Um, but I want to backtrack a little bit, talk about a little bit about your, you, you know, the earlier stages in your career. Um, we saw you on Showbox uh, and things like that real early in your career. And full respect to you. You don't see a lot of fighters these days do this, but you fought everyone. Baranchek, Maurice Hooker, Regis Progre. You fought everyone on the way up. Um Talk to us about that. I mean, with those, you know, about your, your willingness to, to, you know, mix it up with the best guys, the best prospects, and, and you know, put your O on the line. What, what was that like? What was your mentality coming up fighting all those really, really good young fighters? Yeah, man. I mean, since since I turned pro, you know, I always I always wanted to face the best, you know. I didn't want to – I didn't want to made career, you know, uh, you know, pick my opponents and stuff like that. You know, every time they, they, they gave me a name, you know, I would – I would always take the accept the challenge and I always went into the ring, you know, with with the full intentions of winning the fight, you know. And um right now I think that's that's helped me in my career. You know, I've I've faced I'm a veteran, you know, I'm I'm a veteran already in the sport, so I faced all styles, all types of fighters, you know, and um I think that that benefits me a lot. Do you get that a lot? Like, because you're only 30, right? Like, I hear the name Abel Ramos, and you've been fighting world-class fighters for the better part of a decade now. Do people usually think you're a lot older than you are? People, like, surprised when they find out that look, he's still in his prime. He's 30 years old. Like, people usually think you're a lot older because of your experience? Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, people people seem to think, you know, that I'm older because of the, the fighters that I fought and, you know, the way the way I fight as well. You know, I've, I have the experience, and... um. Like I said, all that is just, it all benefited me in the, in the long run. And, and, and I want to talk, and I want to walk through that, right? Like you had, uh, I think you were only 8-0 when you fought Hooker on Showbox. Is that right? In, in Tennessee? Yeah, yeah um, 8-0. No reservations about taking a fight that big at that time, that early in your career? I mean, I, you, like I said, you don't see a lot of guys take those kind of risks at this stage in their career. You're just like 15-0, 20-0, and then they'll step it up. But you were mm -hmm. fighting Hooker at eight. No, um, is it just confidence, or I mean, what what made you say, "Yeah, I'm gonna fight. I'm ready for this fight right now." I mean, at the time, I I can remember, man. Um, it, it was really hard for me to get fights. You know, I didn't have a promoter, I didn't have a manager, so I was struggling to get fights. Um, I remember I was just just thinking of, of my career, man. I was like, "Do I really want to do this, man?" I because like I can't let can't let time go by. And um, I remember they they called us for that fight. And I took the fight actually in a week notice. I remember they, they, yeah, they, they called us and I was like, I told my brother, I was like, let's do it, man. We, I got to fight. I got to do something, man. If not, then, you know, boss is going to be over for me. I need to, I need to do something with my career. And, you know, I don't want to put, I'm from Dallas. My boy Maurice Hook is from Dallas. I, I don't want to put him on blast because he's a good friend of mine. That was one of those showbox decisions where everyone thought you won the fight. Now you're telling me you only took it on a week notice. Um, 
First, I mean, do you think you won the hooker fight? And second, I mean, how much better could you have done if you had, you know, six, eight week camp? Yeah, no, definitely, man. Um, I, I, at the time, you know, I, I felt that I won, but you know, it was a close fight. And, you know, Maurice Hooker, you know, he's a very good fighter, and um, I did struggle a lot to get in in the inside because you know he was he's a very he's good boxer, very tall, and um, yeah, man. But um, like I said, that that fight, I just I just had all my heart, my all my 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 boxing career on the line, pretty much. Um, it was really good performance, although you didn't get the decision, you know. The hardcores who watch, you know, who watch Showbox obviously thought you won that fight, so it didn't didn't set you back at all. Um, now you're fighting. That was at 140. Now you're fighting at 147, and you kind of had a, a resurgence here. But I don't really want to call it a resurgence. Maybe it's just hitting your prime because, like you said, you seem a lot. You know, people think you're a lot older than you are. You're only 30. Um, the last couple of years, you have the win over uh, Perella, which I want to talk about. Uh, then you have the really close controversial loss to Ugas. And then you have the win over Figueroa. Um, is it just you're more comfortable at the weight, or, or, or what? What do you credit to you know this run of success you're having the last couple of you know last couple of fights? Yeah, man, I, I think it's it's the weight, man. Um, one forty was was getting way too hard for me. I was fighting at forty since the amateurs. You know, my whole career in the amateurs, I pretty much did it at forty. And um, I think the Baranchik fight was my last fight at 140, and I remember just being so drained for that fight, man. I just had no energy. So, yeah, the 47, I think I, I feel stronger. I make the weight easier, and um, I'm liking the success. And the bigger names are there, too, as well, man. So that's the, the division big, to be. Big money fights at 147, which is kind of what I, I, I want to get into. Um, your first fight there. Uh, well, it wasn't your first fight at 47, but um, the fight that propelled you into the title fight was with Brian Perella on on, on Fox. Um, you were down on the cards. Did you know you were down? Or what were they telling you going into that last round? Yeah, definitely, man. I I knew I was I was down. You know, I I wasn't feeling good that night as well. And um, I just yeah, the last round, man. My my brother told me, you know, we we got to do something this round. We gotta. But he he didn't pressure me. You know, he just like. Just told me, just relax in there, look for the punch, and, and it'll come. And, and it came, man, the last second. Uh, with 30 seconds left, you hit one an uppercut, right? And, that, and that's what you rocked him with. Um, yeah. and he, he got up those about 15 seconds left, whatever it was. You stayed patient. Um, what, walk me through what's going on in your mind the last you know, 30 seconds. Set up the uppercut, and then what happens after that? After that, man, I, I felt that the round was close to, to end. I didn't know it was a 10-second counter. I didn't know anything. I just knew, man, that I, I had to get him. I, I didn't think he was going to get up from that first knockdown, to be honest, man. And um, I turned around. I get to the corner, the neutral corner. I turned around, and he's already on his feet, man. So I'm like, oh, man, I got to <laughs> I gotta put him down again. And he, like I said, man, I was just – I had no energy for that fight as well, man. I was just drained. And, um, yeah, man, I just I pulled a little bit of strength I had in me, and I got the stoppage. It was uh, you know, one of the best finishes – I'd seen, um, but then that went there. Uh, you said you didn't think he was going to get up. He did get up, but he never got out of it, right? Like he got up, he was out on his feet. Did you know like, okay, he's done. I just need like 10, literally 10 seconds, one more shot. I can get him out. Or when you saw him wobbled, funny legs, did you knew you, you, you were going to get him out at that point? Did you know like, okay, I can. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, after the first knockdown, I didn't think he was gonna get up, but you know he got up, and I but I knew he wasn't like in, in good shape to continue, so I knew that I just had to, you know, get the right punches in, and then I would get the stoppage. Yeah, and, and the reaction from the boxing world—it wasn't like the Melter Taylor fight, whatever. It's like, oh, there's two seconds. When they ended this fight, it's like even though there were only a couple of seconds left, he couldn't. He was done. He was. He couldn't. Yeah respond to the ref he couldn't walk his like okay this is over um it, i mean it was one of the best finishes i you know i've been watching boxing 30 plus years it's one of the best finishes I, i'd ever seen in a fight um and that obviously propelled you in, into your world title fight um you fought ugas really really tough right i mean um you fought him as well as anyone did um talk to us a little bit about, about that fight the preparation for that fight and then walk us through the, the ugas fight a little bit yeah, man, I remember the, the time, you know, um, after the Pirella fight, I remember everything closed down because of COVID. So, you know, I was, you know, I didn't even know when I was going to fight again. You know, I was just chilling at the house, just trying to get some training in. And, um, yeah, when they called us for the fight, you know, I was excited. It was a world title fight. And, um, 
no, we, we had some very good training. We we went to um Crawford's camp in Omaha. And that's where we prepared for the fight. And um yeah, man, it was it was my first time fighting in a bubble as well. So it was it was a little different, you know, the 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 energy was a little different. It felt more like a more like a sparring session to be honest, man. And um yeah, man, anyway, I, I mean, it was a close fight. It was a it was a very 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 competitive fight. Did you think it was a split decision? Um, one of the judges, Lou Moret, had it wide for you. The other two judges had it really close for Ugas. Uh, you got through 12 rounds. Did you think you had done enough? Or what were, what were your thoughts, you know, in those precious seconds in between, the, you know, the final bell and when they, they read off the cards? What, what, was, what did you think? Yeah, man, um, you know, uh, as fighters, you know, we, we, we go in there, we, we do our plan, we do our fights, and um, we don't really keep score of the rounds, you know, but I felt that it was close, you know. I felt that it was close. I felt that I had done enough. And, you know, I heard him a couple times throughout the fight as well. And um, so, you know, I, I thought I thought I had won it, but I, I definitely thought it was close as well. I, I wanted to touch on something. Um, I, I talked to Keith Thurman. Um, he was doing commentary for a, a PBC card once. I got to talk to him in the hotel. And um, he said, sorry about the, the Pacquiao fight. He, he was saying, you get so close to your life dream. Right? Like his life dream was to kind of beat Pacquiao. And then you lose by one round. And it's it's a lot to take. Now, you lost by one round, right? You lost, you won 117, 111, one card, then seven rounds to five, right, on the other two. Yeah. One round differently, you get a different outcome. Does that serve as motivation? Or did, like, when I was talking to Keith, it kind of seemed like it deflated him a little bit. Like he got this close. You got that close to a world title. Does it motivate you? Okay, I am I'm literally within one round of winning a world title, or does it kind of like set you back a little bit? What 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 is losing a fight that close kind of do to your psyche? Yeah, man. Um for me it just gave me more confidence, you know. I always take the I and mean, I learned that um early in my career, you know, when I when I was fighting the prospects, when I was fighting fighting everybody, um I learned you no know, not not to discourage myself because, you know, it's not going to serve you well, you know. Um, I mean, for Keith, you know, he took a couple years off. You can tell that, you know, it messed him up. And um, it shouldn't be like that, man. You know, old school boxers used to lose, and they used to come back and make great comebacks. And that I, th I feel like that's the type of fighter I am, you know. I don't I don't get discouraged for a loss, especially if it's a close loss. I mean, there's, there's no reason for you to get discouraged, you know. It's just use it as motivation and come back better. Uh, and you certainly have done that. And before we get into the figure off, I want to talk a little bit about what you know the Ugas fight. You fought on the same card as your nephew. If you haven't seen the interview, you can check it out on this on this channel. Uh, Jesus Ramos, the first time you guys fought on a card together. Um, you know what was that like training and, and and being on the same card as your nephew? It was good, man. Um, I used to do the trainings by myself. You know, training camps were just me, and you know my nephew used to be young back then. You know, but um, it, it felt good, man. It felt good having him there. You know you know, pushing each other, motivating each other throughout the whole camp. And um, we're getting used to it now, man. We fought in Figueroa fight, too. He fought there, too, and he's fighting on this one as well. So we're getting used to it, and um, it's, it makes camp easier. I, I wanted to talk to you about that, right? Like, obviously, he's 20 years old now? Or he's 20, 20 right? Yeah, 20 years old, yeah. He, he told me, uh, you know, as a kid, he was six years old. You'd come over and train at his house at his dad's garage, and he would just watch it. Um, did you know right away, okay, this kid's, like, phenomenal. Like, he's not like other kids. Like, he's just special. Like, did, could you tell right away that he was next level? Yeah, man. Um, I can remember, you know, he was small at the time. And, um, you know, he was doing kid stuff at the time. And um, he he would show up to – come out to the gym and train for a little bit. But then he would leave. And um, But then uh, at the age of nine, that's when he started taking it serious, man. He started showing up every day to the gym. And then – I saw him, you know, progress his whole his whole career, just getting better and better. And I was like, man, this kid's gonna be it's gonna be a problem. The pros too, and, and he is. Yeah, I put him, um, maybe a couple of other prospects. You know, Boots Enos, Virgil Ortiz, uh, David Morales, one of the like, the guys who are gonna carry the sport to the next generation. Right? Like, he's that good. He's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, uh, but he's so humble still, right? Like, and, and that's that's what I like best about him. Um, so you, you're saying you could you knew you could see the progression like okay this this kid is not like others he's he's different yeah yeah man since since it was little he had that dedication he had that hunger that drive and um just that's that 
smartness, man, in the ring. He's just he looks like a veteran. He's 20 years old, man. Young. And you watch him and you think, okay, he's gonna be a big, you know, big slug kid that just comes forward and molds you. And he can do that, but there's so much skill. Like he's I mean, he's a good counter puncher. He he works up the jab well. You saw him work up his back foot, like he's like where did this kid learn how to do all of this at 19, 20 years old? Like it, it really, I, I told him he is the fighter that golden boy wanted Mungia to be right. Like yeah. he is like, he's a, he looks like, okay, he's just going to come forward and try to take my head off. And he can't do that, but it, there's so much more skill to him. Like he is such a, a finely tuned fighter at 19. It's really, really impressive. Um, He told me he wants to be a world champion at 20. He's 20 now. It's going to be tough because there's only, one guy is likely going to have all the belts. Can he do it? Can he get to a world title this year? What do you think? Uh, yeah, man. Like you said, it's going to be hard. You know, I think um, none of the top guys are going to take that risk, man. There's this, there's this, there's this way, no way possible that's going to happen, man. But it'll definitely come sooner or later, man. He's he's definitely putting in the work. He's definitely got the has the skills to to get there. Yeah, you look at him, he's such a big kid, right? And he says he still makes 54 comfortably. So the only question is not when. It's like how soon and then how many belts can he win, right? Like I said, like this, guys like him and Ortiz and Enos and Morales, like, okay. I mean, this it's only a matter of time. And he's actually younger than all those guys. Like, he's 20. Like, yeah, man. <laughs> he's 20. There's, yeah. The future is, is really, really bright with him. Um, so you, you've been in, in camp with him. Uh, we're getting ready uh, for the uh, – Lopez fight, uh, but before that, and this one hurt me a little bit because, like, I'm from Texas, and Brandon Figueroa is not, I'm not just a fan of, of uh, I'm sorry, Omar Figueroa. Uh, yeah. I know him personally. I like him a lot. He's a great dude, and you beat him up pretty bad. It was kind of a crossroads fight for both of you. You were coming off the loss. Um, he was coming off a loss to Ugas, too, right? Like, one guy was going to stay in the title picture, and the other guy was going to kind of fall out of it. Um obviously you won how important was that win for you uh super important man like you said i mean we were both coming off losses and um and i knew that you know throughout the whole camp you know i knew that i had a i had to win this fight and i had to make a statement too man to to remain at the top you know in the top levels of boxing and um yeah man that's why i trained extra hard for the fight and um the result came you know perfectly so, so, so talk to me about that fight, right? I mean, Omar Figueroa is a guy with a really, really unconventional style. He comes at you, he switches, and it usually takes people a while, if at all, to kind of figure him out. Um, you kind of gave him the first round and then dominated the fight immediately and then throughout the rest of the fight. I think he stopped him after – it was stopped him. He quit on the stool after six, right? Or they stopped it after six is what happened? It was the sixth round? Yeah, after the yeah. fifth, it was, it was going to be the sixth round. It was going to be the sixth. Yeah. Um, what did you figure out so quickly, right? Like, why did you figure him out so quickly? You know, his style and and his and his movement, and how did you figure it out so quickly when it takes others, other good fighters, so long, if at all, to kind of figure him out? Yeah, man. After the first round, you know, his head movement was a little, you know, awkward, and um, I was throwing a punch somewhere, and you no, know, his head would be somewhere else, and um, I was catching him with my thumbs, like just beating up my hands, you know. So you know, I started timing timing his movement, you know, and then. Going to the body, you know, the head can move all at once, but the body's right there, and um, I think that's what that's what made a difference for me, just that body work. The body work was was phenomenal. Um, is that, but you've always been a really good body puncher, right? Like, do people give you enough credit for that? Like, they always talk about you know at Univision Spence being a great body puncher, new guys, and they are, but you're just as good a body puncher as any of those guys, aren't you? I mean, uh, you, you, your body attack has has always kind of been ferocious, hasn't it? Yeah, man, that's something that's. I've always focused on that, you know, every training camp, man, um, got to go to the body, man. We got to go to the body. Um, so this, that win, obviously, because of this fight, uh, the Barrios, uh, the Thurman Barrios pay-per-view, uh, which is in about three, four weeks, right? Um, about three weeks. Um, you get ready for Jose to Lopez. I got to ask you, though, um, the main event, uh, Thurman Barrios, who you got and why? Um, I think Thurman, man, just because of, you know, his experience at welterweight, I think Barrios, um, also coming off that, that TKO loss to Davis is going to be a little hard. And, um, yeah, man, I got Thurman. I got Thurman maybe by, by late stoppage. Between knocking out Figueroa 
and now taking third. I mean, you're not showing the Texans any love right now. I, I got to tell you, you're not, you're not, <laughs> you're not showing the Texans any love. No, uh, Thurman's a great fighter. I mean, so let's say Thurman wins that fight. Is that a fight you want to look at? Is is Ugas the rematch you want, or like who who do you want to fight next? You know, assuming you win, is it Thurman next? Are you guys fighting on the same card? Is it? Do you want to go try to get an Ugas rematch uh, and avenge that really close loss? What is it that you know Abel Ramos wants to do next? Yeah, man, I think um, I definitely want that fight, you know, um, hoping um, Thurman wins that fight and, and that I win the fight. We both get the job done. Um, I think I think that's a great fight to make in the, the welterweight division. And um, if not him, then any of the top, any of the top welterweights, man. Um, I think Ugas is fighting Spence now. So, you know, I don't know, man. I'm kind of the, the names are kind of like. You know, they're they're all put together right now, man. They they all got fights coming up, but I think um, me and Thurman could be could be a great fight. No, it was. Um, he had a great fight with, with Lopez. Um, he lost, you know, pretty close decision. He rallied really different. He, he rallied a lot in the second half of that fight to win a bunch of rounds, and he lost a close decision. Uh, what would you do differently if you fought Thurman to kind of get that decision or or, or stop him, which Jose Cito was unable to do? Um, just. I don't know, man. I, I you know, uh, right now I'm just focused on Jose Cito. Oh, Jose so Cito but, Lopez. I, yeah. Yeah, but um, but um, I mean, when the time comes, I think um, we 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 could have a good a good game plan against Thurman, and um, just just I mean, I think for Jose Cito, what was playing was the pressure. You know, he pressured him a lot, but you know, I would do it more smartly. You know, a little bit more of a smart pressure, counter punching, and all that. And uh, Thurman has a history of not being able to take it to the body. So well, right? I mean, that would be something that, obviously yeah, that as well. You, you'd look to capitalize on. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about you, you, your your nephew's division. That's going to be unified one way or the other, undisputed. Uh, Castano, uh, Charlo. Who do you got in that rematch? Man, um, I think I, I think I got Castano on that one, man. I mean, I think the the first fight was very close. I mean, I don't know, man. I think it's a close fight. It's a close fight. Uh, it, it is. It is. Um, I, I thought Castano eked out the first one. I thought it was either 7-5. Maybe you could score to draw. I, I, but I thought Castano probably did a little bit of work in the first fight. Um, and then, you know, the rematch, I guess, 50-50. You, you seem to be leaning towards Castano, but you're not that confident. Like, it, you think it's kind of a 50-50 fight? I think, it's, yeah, I think it's a 50-50 fight. I think um, whoever makes those adjustments from the first fight is going to it's going to take the win for this one. And um, it's going to be 50, 50, man, because they, I'm sure they both learn from, from each other and um, they're going to be, they're going to know what to expect. And whoever makes the, the adjustments is the one that's going to take that win. Um, so obviously the next step for you is February 5th on pay-per-view. You and host the Lopez. You want to kind of give us a, 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 without telling us too much, give us a, a prediction of what's going to happen uh, with you and host the on February 5th. I mean, it's gonna be a great fight, man. That's that's all I can say for right now. You know, I don't. I like to make predictions, or you know, but um, I'm definitely gonna, you know, go go for the win, of course, for that fight. And um, I think the the crowd are gonna enjoy the fight. Um, oh, that's like I said, that that's for sure. Um, that's that's a can't miss fight of the year type fight, which is which is why I wanted to talk to you. Uh, why I wanted to interview you. Um, also, one other question I, I wanted to ask. Uh, you've been in, like I said, Regis Ugas, ton of good fighters. Who would you say is the best fighter you've been in the ring with as a pro? Man, that's a good that's a good uh, question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, and I faced all those guys in different you no know, different times in my career. So, man, I don't know. I don't know who I, who could be the. I think I think the Ugas fight was probably probably the more. It was like very competitive. You know, it was very. Yeah. You no know, thinking, he couldn't make a mistake with them, and you no, know, he had that he had that power to to you know to capitalize if you make made a mistake. So I think I think that's the fight that I that I I felt like I was like doing a lot more thinking than than any other fights. And I want to ask you about that because who guys kind of had a similar path as you, right? Like he started at one forty, he had a couple losses, then he came back at forty seven, and kind of found a second win. And you know now he's one of the best one hundred forty seven pounders in the world. What is that makes Ugas so good? Like you said, Ugas, right? And and obviously he's had this rebirth at one forty seven. What what makes Ugas so so good? Um, I think that man. I think the his 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 
I think people people underestimate him. You know, when when it comes to his counter punching, you know, he in video he looks like he's always just standing right in front of you. You know, but he's very slick, very slick, and he gets some. His counters are very strong as well, you know, so you can't make a mistake with Ugas. And um, I think that's what makes him what makes him a good fighter in the, in the welterweight division. Well, I appreciate your time, Abel. It was a pleasure to speak to you. Uh, it, was, it was an honor. Look forward to watching you on February 5th. You want to tell everyone where they can find you on social media? Yeah, Abel Ramos on Facebook and Abel Ramos Boxing on Instagram. God yeah. bless, champ. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Right, thank, thank you. Appreciate you. it. Absolutely.